to YouTube, it's your boy King Supreme. Back in the video, we got truth about the white slave trade, forgotten history. Now, if you're new here, welcome to the channel, homies. Just be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share if you see more bangers from your boy, you feel me? Because the grind never stops. But hey, today, so we got some more um, interesting, interesting history today, bro. Interesting videos. Um, very, very sad. I saw this one suggested in the comments, and yo, I've been getting to a lot of you know the deeper truth and the deeper you know things about history they didn't teach us in school that's not really widely widely known you know what i'm saying the deep deep level stuff bro. and i love getting to the videos like this to history to more because it's the truth bro. it's the truth about our world it's the truth about what um what happened you know before and you know getting to the the deeper levels of understanding i love to gain more knowledge to be you know to know to full um, extent of everything, you know, some people, you know, rather just, you know, no surface level stuff and to each his own, live the life you want to live, right? But me personally, I just love getting to the deeper answers and the deeper truths of this world, bro, you feel me? Um, so very, very interested, I, I, I like, I seek the truth type, you know, I seek the truth, I seek true understanding, true knowledge, and, you know, these videos are just a start of a really interesting journey on my channel to get into more of the deeper levels of the truth. Y'all know I react to anything on this channel, so I thank y'all, I really appreciate y'all for the suggestion right here, more and more uh, to come soon, y'all know what the deal is, road to 50 case, you know, the grind doesn't stop, so be sure to turn on those post notifications, because these videos will continuously be posted, and uh, yeah, let's get straight into this one, yo, get into more of these videos, saw this one suggested, so let me know anything y'all wanted me to get to, let me know down in the comments, you know, every single one of my reactions I get from y'all, um, suggestions in the comments, so be sure to put down what y'all want below, and I got y'all, but let's trade this one, truth about the white slave trade, let's get it out. Slavery is as old as human civilization, dating back beyond recorded history, and it exists even still today. Every culture on every continent practiced some form of slavery, whether it was serfdom, indentured servitude, or collective peasantry. However, when the slave trade is mentioned, people normally think of the black African slave trade to the Western Hemisphere during the colonial period from 1500 to the mid 1800s as practiced by the European colonial powers. Estimates range from 10 to 13 million Africans being brought to the New World, with around 10 million surviving to be sold in North and South America, as well as in the Caribbean islands. Of this number, the best estimate is that 450,000 went to the British, French, and Spanish colonies in what is now the United States and Caribbean. Brazil alone received almost 5 million, the rest going to the Spanish colonies in South America. Sick. Slavery still exists in the world, yet most of the major powers ignore the fact and refuse to even acknowledge that it still exists. It is still quite active. Yet, six decades before the American Civil War, a war was fought by the United States on foreign shores to try and stop the white slave trade. What was the white slave trade? Does it still exist? Who were the Barbary pirates? What was the result of American intervention? How did it occur, and what was the aftermath? Hmm. And how did nine U.S. Marines and their mercenaries make history and give birth to a legendary fighting force while also ending the white slave trade in North Africa? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, former soldier, Marine Corps scout sniper, history professor, historian and book author, and we will answer these questions and other issues on this segment of Forgotten History. Shout out to Colin. Come to TurboTax and don't do your taxes. Meet with one of our experts. Speaking the truth, shout out to Colin. This is going to be a good one. I'm interested to see about this. Let's find out more of the truth, y'all. During the late 18th and Locked early in. 19th centuries, the world was on fire as France and Britain were engaged in the Napoleonic Wars which was another series of conflicts just like the Seven Years' War, again involving every nation in Europe. The Seven Years' War was also known as the French and Indian War in the United States. Both these conflicts were fought on every continent and on every ocean and in every colony. Even during these protracted wars, the transatlantic slave trade continued. It was big business. While the European powers were destroying each other, Thomas Jefferson became the third president of the United States from March 4, 1801 to March 4, 1809. 
and he had several major issues to contend with. The Louisiana Purchase of 1803 from France doubled the size of the United States. The Yazoo territorial disputes in western Georgia were hotly contested. The launching of the Lewis and Clark expedition in 1804 to explore the newly acquired country and the contested issue of slavery. In 1806, Jefferson denounced the international slave trade as a violation of human rights and called upon Congress to criminalize it. Congress responded by approving the act prohibiting importation of slaves the following year. No longer could slaves be brought from Africa, although slavery was still legal in the United States. Right. Then there were also the rising tensions between the United States and Great Britain, which dominated the final years of Jefferson's second term, as the Royal Navy had been seizing American merchant ships and impressing sailors. However, one situation which has gone largely unnoticed in history was Jefferson being the first president to send the military overseas into direct action, the war against the Barbary pirates. For decades prior to Jefferson's accession to office, the Barbary Coast pirates of North Africa had been capturing foreign merchant and warships, stealing their valuable cargoes and enslaving crew members, while often demanding huge ransoms for their release. Many of these ships and crews were American. Before independence, American merchant ships were protected from the Barbary pirates by the naval and diplomatic influence of Great Britain, which had threatened the use of military force should their ships be molested. However, that American protection came to an end after the colonies won their independence. The Barbary pirates also attacked the coastal northern Mediterranean, launching attacks against France, Italy, and Sicily, kidnapping women as white slaves, primarily and whenever possible, notable wealthy persons and ships for ransom. Damn. In their feverish search for white women slaves, a few pirates even went as far as the coast of Iceland, raiding inland to kidnap women and bring them back to North Africa. Iceland. North African slave markets thrived, as under Islamic law, known as Sharia, although fellow Muslims could not be enslaved, non-Muslims could be and were. Over a period of more than 300 years, it is estimated that one million white Europeans, to include those captured at sea as well as through land raids abroad, were enslaved. Many of these were Americans captured at sea. In 1794, in reaction to the attacks, Congress had passed a law authorizing the payment of tribute to the Barbary... <sighs> the white slave trade, that's crazy. It was so, like he said at the beginning of it, it was so normalized, it was just, slavery was everywhere, but he said they went to, as far as Iceland, it was over a million, including people captured in America, this is just insanity, y'all. And were. Over a period of more than 300 years, it is estimated that one million white Europeans, to include those captured at sea, as well as through land raids abroad, were enslaved. Many of these were Americans captured at sea. In 1794, in reaction to the attacks, Congress had passed a law authorizing the payment of tribute to the Barbary states. Part of that law was the Naval Act of 1794, which authorized the construction of six frigates establishing the United States Navy. By the end of the 1700s, when Jefferson was Secretary of State, the United States had concluded treaties with all of the Barbary states, the Ottoman regencies of Algiers, Tunis, and Tripoli, along with independent Morocco. When Congress authorized $80,000 for Morocco to not molest American shipping, it was considered a good deal, as it was a cost savings when compared to the loss of ships, cargo, and sailors. The Bay of Algiers, Mustafa Baba, also agreed, and many American merchantmen were escorted by Portuguese warships, as Portugal also had a treaty with the Islamic States. Mm. But Jefferson was opposed to paying tribute, which he considered to be a modern Danegeld when Saxon England paid the Danish Vikings not to attack. It did not work. Although Morocco and Algiers initially agreed, just weeks before Jefferson took office, Tripoli began attacking American merchant ships in an attempt to extract further tribute. Jefferson had seen enough. Jefferson tried diplomacy, and his letter to Pasha Yusuf Karamanli emphasized, our sincere desire to cultivate peace and commerce with your subjects. Pasha Karamanli, the ruler of modern-day Tunisia, felt that the Americans had insulted him by not offering to pay tribute. He threatened continued actions, if not so respected. So much violence. Pasha Karamanli was already at war with Sweden, having broken an existing treaty after Sweden agreed to pay annual tribute and ransom for 131 captives. 14 Swedish merchantmen had been seized by Tripolitan Corsairs. Some of these were white women who were being transported on Swedish merchantmen. 
and it is not known if they were ever recovered, as the white women were rarely ransomed. They were highly prized and sold. The Pasha then declared war on the United States on May 14, 1801, by chopping down the flagpole at the American consulate in Tripoli, a direct act of war. Jefferson sent three frigates and a schooner under the command of U.S. Navy Commodore Richard Dale as a show of force and to protect U.S. ships entering the Mediterranean through the Straits of Gibraltar. Dale learned of the declaration when he reached Gibraltar on July 1st, 1801. From that point, Dale's ships blocked two of the Pasha's Corsairs operating as raiders and messengers inside the harbor. Mm. Yusuf Karimanli was shocked at the American audacity. The Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, Selim III in Istanbul, was also less than amused, yet did not interfere when the Americans became involved. He had just concluded treaties. It's just war, 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 violence, more violence. All you do a treaty, I'm gonna break it because I want to, because I want more of your stuff. Like it's just, a, it's just never stops, bro. Since the beginning of history, bro, it just never stops. Like I'm, 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 I'm like, dang, bro. I'm like, I'm like, then I said, okay, they did a treaty, and then they went against the treaty just because they wanted more stuff. Like, bruh, like, just, it's just like, a, just, there's just so much greed and so much evil for power, bruh. Like, this, this is what makes up people, is this power. For whatever reason, bruh, not, uh, you know, um, you know, self-love, not self ref no, nah, it's just power, I need more power to give me more money, just to get what? Like, you know, it's just, it's just so... Uh, all this shit seems so unnecessary, and I know in the comments people are like, oh, well, it's needed, business, why, man, sh bro, oh, fuck the business side, fuck the money, fuck the power, and that shit does not fucking matter, bro, like, bro, just love, man, like, these new, these dudes knew nothing about no love and happiness, I bet they, bet you they never experienced it in their entire lives, that's why they were so mad all the time, they were like, bro, I need more power, it's gonna make me happy, bro, when, when reality, they kept like, why do I still not feel happy, because, Power, money, all that was not gonna give you that get you the happiness, bro. You feel me? It's just gonna get you even more and more down because you keep doing these violent acts against people, and it's just like it just that shit doesn't make you feel good. Sad shit, bro. By the harbor. Yusuf Karim. Now we're learning about the white slaves, bro. It's like the Sultan of the like, what Ottoman else can we gonna Selim find out? Bro. Istanbul was also less than a minute, yet did not interfere when the Americans became involved. He had just concluded treaties with Russia and Austria and was trying to westernize his empire along western lines. This included eliminating the white slave trade, and this position was not favored by many of his subordinate regional leaders, especially in North Africa, and they launched a revolt against him and his cousin and successor, Mustafa IV, had him murdered in 1807. He was not about to give up such a lucrative business. The U.S. blockades halted Barbary trade and raids with Europe, about did not lucrative stop business. Tripoli's trade with the other Barbary states. It did, however, incite the other rulers, who considered siding with the Pasha, and they expelled their American diplomats. The United States was putting a major dent into their pirate enterprises to include the white slave trade. The possibility of Tunis, Algiers, and Morocco joining forces as a result of losing this lucrative business became a serious concern during 1802, but in 1803, Captain Edward Preble was the new American naval commander and he was aware of the white slave trade and piracy, and he began to deal with it. On September 12, 1803, the USS Constitution arrived off the Barbary coast to confront the Tripolitan pirates. In October 1803, the frigate USS Philadelphia ran aground and was attacked and seized, and the 307-man crew was held for ransom. In response, on February 16, 1804, a group under Navy Lieutenant Stephen Decatur slipped into Tripoli Harbor after dark boarded and set fires that destroyed the Philadelphia. The Pasha, in response, demanded an outrageous sum and ransom for his American hostages, even threatening death if it was not paid. In 1804, Commodore Samuel Barron, aboard the USS President, took command of 11 vessels, and he had new orders. But due to illness, he handed command of the squadron to Captain John Rogers. Jefferson had again seen enough and decided to take direct and immediate action. He sent the order, Ex-Consul William Eaton, a former Army Captain who used the title of General, and United States Marine Corps First Lieutenant Presley O'Bannon would lead a force of eight U.S. Marines and 500 mercenaries to take Derna and free any hostages. Eight. These mercenaries were Greeks from Crete, Arabs, and Berbers, opposed to the regime, and started on a march across the desert from Alexandria, Egypt in April 1805. Mm. Their objective was to capture the Tripolitan city of Derna. 
The Muslim troops were under the command of Egyptian Sheikh El Tahib, the Ottoman Empire Viceroy. William Eaton, who was overbearing and not very friendly, kept himself aloof from his men and was in overall command but leading only half the group. He had a tough job controlling the largely undisciplined mercenaries and the infighting between the Christian Greeks and Muslims, few of whom were professional soldiers, became a problem. His promises of money and loot once they took Derna was looked upon skeptically. However, Obanus, on April 26, Captain Hull's ships then opened fire and bombarded Derna's batteries for an hour. Meanwhile, Eaton divided his remaining army into two separate attacking parties. The attack began at 14.45 hours, with Lieutenant O'Bannon and his Marines leading the attack with 50 inexperienced Greek gunners. Eaton's force was halted due to high volumes of enemy musket fire, but O'Bannon pushed his men through the inaccurate fire, as witnessed from the ships. Carefully interchanging his men into various ranks to fire, advance, reload, and continue the process, O'Bannon's force took the Fort Cannons. Eaton wounded in the left wrist would report later. This is crazy, bro. This is wild. This one is wild, dog. And there's still a lot more on deck I got for y'all with these kind of videos, the historical videos, um, his, his, um, his, you know, historical, you know, facts and everything, and getting to the deeper truth. But we're just scratching the surface. But there's still a lot more I've seen from y'all that we got to get to. But this one is very, very interesting, y'all. I'm, I'm completely locked in, y'all. Lieutenant O'Bannon and his Marines leading the attack with 50 inexperienced Greek gunners. Eaton's force was halted due to high volumes 50 of 50 inexperienced. Fire. But O'Bannon pushed his men through the inaccurate fire, as witnessed from the ships. Carefully interchanging his men into various ranks to fire, advance, reload, and continue the process, O'Bannon's force took the Fort Cannons. Eaton wounded in the left wrist would report later that O'Bannon with his Marines and Greeks had quote, passed through a shower of musketry from the walls of houses, took possession of the battery, end quote. Eaton's forces caught up and turned the defenders' own abandoned guns against them, pushing them out of the city and into a well-placed ambush set up by O'Bannon just outside the main gate. During the entire battle, O'Bannon lost two men killed and three wounded Marines, with nine of his mercenaries killed. Eaton's losses among the Muslims is unknown. O'Bannon raised the flag over the captured city at 1,600 hours. Wow. They had just defeated a force four times their number who were in That's a fortified defensive posture. And for the first time in American history, that a flag from the United States had been raised on foreign soil. Wow. Hostages were freed. First time in American history a flag was raised on foreign so soil. All the hostages were freed. And this is all, you know, because of the white slave trade, which I'm just learning about, bro. We're learning about so much new stuff, bro. None of this shit was taught to me in school, though. That's the crazy part about it. But we learn more about it on YouTube. We learn more on YouTube than we have learned in school, bro. So it's crazy stuff, bro. Let me know how y'all feel about this one in the comments. City at 1,600 hours. They had just defeated a force four times their number who were in a fortified defensive posture. And for the first time in American history that a flag from the United States had been raised on foreign soil. Hostages were freed and the Navy sank the pirate ships in harbor. Accurate naval fire from Argus and the other ships forced them back and Derna remained in American hands. Yusuf reluctantly signed a peace treaty on June 10, 1805, aboard the USS Constitution. The treaty granted American ships passage through the Mediterranean without further payments of tribute and freedom from harassment. This also meant joining the other European nations and halting the very active and overt white slave trade. The war was over, and so was active white slavery from North Africa. Marine Corps legend has it that Hammett presented O'Bannon with a Mameluke sword, a sign of prestige and power. Emboldened by this event, more European nations also increased their naval presence and resisted the Barbary pirates, stopped paying tribute, crippling their commercial trade. Those Barbary, those Barbary pirates and stuff were on southern coastal insane. Europe, ending hostage taking. They were like going at everyone. And their demand for ransoms and the white slave trade. Presley O'Bannon and his eight Marines had done the seemingly impossible. But it would not be the last time Marines were called upon to do the impossible and succeed. Super 5. We hope you enjoyed this segment of Forgotten the History. Please click like and subscribe for free. And please stay tuned and be engaged and informed. Send us comments if you have questions very or informed. show ideas. And we will respond to all requests and comments as soon as we can. Thank you. You're very informative. And this was to stop the white, slave or white slavery or the white slave trade in Africa. Interesting, bro.
very very interesting that's the video hope y'all enjoyed it we learn more and more of the facts every every single video y'all and i'm just so so glad that we're getting on this truth journey on my channel bro so a lot more videos on story y'all y'all just gotta let me know what y'all want to see next bro but that's it a lot more videos on deck that i got saw from y'all in the comments and y'all know but every single video i do i get from y'all suggestions in the comments so let me know what y'all want to see me get to next i'm down for whatever and uh, y'all know hey bro i'm on i'm on this truth tip so you feel me hey anything is fair game so just put it down below in the comments and i got y'all but you know how the deal is road to 50k so you know the grind doesn't stop be sure to turn on those post notifications because these videos will continuously be posted and i got y'all more of these videos thank y'all for this uh very informative and really cool suggestion and i got i got a lot more on deck for y'all as i said so love y'all and uh yeah thank y'all for always watching thank y'all for always being there for me and always supporting me man much love to y'all always i got y'all forever with these uploads no no question at all like, comment, subscribe, share if you need to see more videos. It's your boy, King Supreme. I'll catch y'all next time, homies.